explain about quantum computing. So this is a closely allied technology. AI and quantum computing are increasingly going hand in hand. They are not the same thing, but quantum computing is going to make AI more powerful. So what is quantum computing, right? In very brief, quantum computing is the application of the laws of quantum mechanics in producing more powerful computers. Now, that's a very vague thing. You won't understand a thing about it. So let me explain in more detail. So the computers that we use today, whether it's cell phones or tablets or laptops, these are called classical computers. These computers are essentially enormous and enormously powerful calculators. They do all their uh, processing in terms of ones and zeros, right? So all the processing is either ones or zeros, zeros, yes or no, and that's how the logic flows. And typically a processor would, would perform millions of such individual one or zero computations per second. And that's how we get uh, computing power, right? So all data, all images, all text, all speech, at the fundamental level is represented in terms of ones and zeros. And these binary operations are what drives a computer. So the integrated of circuit, which is at the heart of computers, it is composed of transistors or MOSFETs, M-O-S-F-E-T, metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. So these are the units that store ones and zeros and store data and perform the basic yes or no computations, right? So these deal in terms of bits, bits of information. A bit is either a zero or a one. It can either be a zero or a one, right? So a transistor would generally do these logic calculations based on these bits. So a bit in a classical computer is either zero or one. In a quantum computer, you have the laws of quantum mechanics because today we have miniaturized these transistors that perform these operations and store data. We have miniaturized them to the level that they are now as small as molecules and almost at the atomic level. And it is at this level, this ultra microscopic level, that the laws of quantum mechanics come into effect. And these laws are unlike anything we see and experience in the day-to-day -day mundane world. So in quantum computers, we have something called quantum bits, qubits. So a classical bit is one or zero. A quantum bit can be in a superposition. So it's either one or zero or one and zero. So it has three possible values, right? It's a superposition of three, three different values. Now, that's just a little bit more than one and zero. It can contain one, zero or one and zero. But when you place these different bits, when you take a whole number, a large bunch of bits and you place them in a quantum superposition, that's when you can create inside a quantum computer an immense multi-dimensional computing space that can crunch through and annihilate extremely com complex problems in a very short period of time. So for example, this is at least a thousand times minimum faster than a classical computer. So you would you can have quantum computers today, almost today, that can perform in one second a calculation that would take the fastest supercomputer a week to, to perform. So that's the paradigm shift that we are eventually going to have. So there is the concept of quantum supremacy to produce, a, to, to create a quantum computer that can outperform the best classical supercomputer in a certain calculation. And Google has claimed quantum supremacy, and a Chinese university has also claimed that it has achieved quantum supremacy. So quantum computing is about leveraging the and exploiting the laws of quantum mechanics, coherent superpositions, quantum entanglement, uh, quantum tunneling, and such like. So these are the laws of quantum mechanics that are exploited in quantum computers. And that's what gives us this enormous, massive power, computing power, compared to a classical computer. Now, the thing is that it is important right now for quantum computing to take off because it has been estimated that by the year 2040, we will no longer be able to produce sufficient power to run all the computers that will be, that will be present in the world by 2040. We're going to run out of, run out of electrical power 
we will no longer be able to generate that much electrical power that these devices require because computing is is exploding computers are everywhere we have things like bitcoin mining and and uh, cryptocurrency mining which are, which are extremely energy intensive so very soon in just a couple of decades it is estimated we will run out of power to to generate to 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 run all these computers so if you have quantum computers that are a thousand times more powerful and a thousand times faster than classical computers or even more then that could essentially alleviate this impending power crisis so that's why industry is uh, rushing to De develop ever more powerful quantum computers. We are in the infancy of this particular technology because coherent quantum superpositions are extremely fragile. They need ultra cold temperatures. So that takes a lot of uh, technical know-how. So this technology is still being developed. A quantum computer that is as powerful, that is a thousand times as powerful as a classical superconduct uh, supercomputer is typically just the size of a refrigerator. So that's the kind of technology that is beginning to in, emerge. It's in its infancy, but it's going to uh, go forward. So that is the real big deal right now. That is what corporations and governments are pursuing. So every corporation and every government that has ambitions of leading the world is taking this extremely seriously. And there are all kinds of experiments being done right now to develop this technology. So that is in brief, quantum computing.